Chapter 7, Section 5, Part 1. We are going to be talking about roots and zeros. Okay, on this first board I have a lot of information, so make sure that you're listening to what I say as well as writing down these definitions. Um, up to this point we've really used roots, zeros, and factors almost interchangeably. Um, factors are a little bit different, but roots and zeros and intercepts, we've basically exchange those um, as synonyms. Um, but here we're just going to start off with a couple of, of definitions to show you exactly what it is. So if we have this polynomial f of x and we know that c is a zero, okay? c is considered a zero of f of x, all right? If c is a zero, that means that x minus c is a factor of f of x, okay? We used these yesterday when we were doing synthetic division. So if we had x minus c, if you were to set x minus c equal to zero, you would get c. And that's what you put in the corner of your box. You put the zero in the box. And this is the factor that you get from it. Okay, so we were interchanging those yesterday when we were using synthetic division. c is a root or a solution of f of x equals zero. So if you're trying to solve for the roots of something, that means that you're taking this polynomial and setting it equal to zero. Then when you find c, c is considered a root. Okay? Also, if you're graphing this and c is a real number so it doesn't have an i, it's not imaginary, then you're going to get the point c0 on the graph because that's an x-intercept. Okay? So that is a definition of zeros, factors, roots, and intercepts. Okay? Down here, when we get out of the way, we have the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says every polynomial with a degree greater than zero has at least one root in the set of complex numbers. Okay, that's very wordy. Basically, the fundamental theorem of algebra says the degree of the polynomial is equal to the number of roots you're going to find. Okay, so if you have something, remember degree is the biggest exponent. So if you have something that's degree 4, it's going to have 4 roots. Whether those roots are real or imaginary or complex, it's for you to find out, but there's going to be 4 roots. Okay? On that note, if you have an imaginary root, okay, imaginary roots always, always, always come in pairs. And the fancy word for those pairs, conjugate. Hey! That's come up, this is I think the third time it's come up this year, okay? Conjugates, we can't forget conjugates, all right? So, for example, if you're given that you have this root 1 plus 2i, then it's automatically understood that, that, that it's conjugate 1 minus 2i is also a root, okay? So they're working in pairs. So this 1 plus 2i is a given root, that means that it's automatically understood that 1 minus 2i is also a root. Okay? Lots of information. Make sure you get it written down. Hit the pause button. Alright. Types of problems that you're going to see today, um, it's going to ask you to solve equations and then state the type and the number of roots. Okay, so we're going to be looking for imaginary or real roots and the number of them. Okay, so if we have x plus 3 equals 0, we'll start off with the easier one x plus 3 equals 0. What is the degree of this polynomial? This is degree 0. This is degree 1. The biggest degree of the terms is 1. So if this is degree 1, that means that we are going to have 1 root. Okay? And to solve for that root, we're going to solve for x. So if we add 3 on both sides, that means I get x equals 3. So I solve my equation. Check. State the type and number of roots. This is the number of roots. What is 3? Is 3 a real number or is it imaginary? 1, 2, 3. If you can count to that number, that means it is a real number. So this is real. We have one root and it is real. And that root is 3. Done. Okay? Moving on. We have x squared minus 8x plus 16. Why would the fun in this lesson be if we were not factoring? 
Okay, those of you who see this as a perfect square trinomial, awesome job. For those of you who don't, and we're going to factor it using product sum, that's okay, we can do that as well. Okay, both are acceptable. So here, we're looking for, we're first going to solve. So we're looking for a product of negative 16 that adds to negative 8. Dum, 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 dum. If you said negative 4 and negative 4, you are ding, 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 correct. Okay, which means this guy looks like this. X minus 4, X minus 4 equals 0. To solve for this, we take both parts, set it equal to 0. And solve. Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. Here we get x equals 4, and here we get x equals 4. Okay. Now, the reason why I solve both is because I want to explain something from you. This is called a double root. Okay. Our degree of this polynomial was degree 2 which means, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, that we should be getting two roots, okay? Which we do, it's just a double root. It's the root, it's four and four, okay? So here we're going to get two real roots. As our answer, and our roots are just going to be at four. Okay, we have a double root at four, okay? So our fundamental theorem stays true, it's just that those roots happen to be happening at the same point. What are you going to do? A polynomial does what a polynomial does. Alright, this example, we have x cubed plus 2x equals 0. We want to first solve each equation. Hmm, how do I solve an x cubed? I'm not really sure. So to make the problem simpler, what should I look for first? A greatest common factor, that's a great idea. So here, both of these terms, they have an x in common. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that x out. That leaves me with an x squared plus 2 equals 0. Using my 0 product property, I'm going to set this guy equal to 0. x equals 0. Oh, that's already solved. And set this equal to 0. x squared plus 2 equals 0. That one's done, though. We have 1. Yes, how many roots are we expecting? Okay, when I solve this one, I subtract 2 on both sides, I get x squared equals a negative 2. How do I undo a square? I take a square root. Alright, the square root of an x squared is x the square root of a negative 2. This negative guy becomes an i. And then the square root of 2 cannot be simplified so it stays. Whenever I take a square root, plus and minus. Ta-da! Okay, so we did. We found three roots. We have one real at x equals 0, and then we have 2 imaginary at x equals positive i square root of 2 and negative i square root of 2. Hey, look at that. That's our conjugates coming in pairs. Okay, and this is our answer. Notice degree, the number of roots that we found, match up. Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Math is a wonderful thing. Okay, our last example. We have x to the fourth minus 1 equals 0. Okay, I'm first going to write this in quadratic form. This is what we learned in section 7-3. So, I'm going to let u equal x squared. If that is the case, I end up with u squared minus 1 equals 0. Solve for u. Add 1. u squared equals 1. I take the square root to undo a square. Square root of u squared is u equals square root
square root of 1. Don't forget, plus and minus. Okay, that means u equals positive 1, u equals negative 1. So u equals positive 1, u equals negative 1. What does u equal? x squared. So I have x squared equals 1 and x squared equals negative 1. How do I undo a square? Square root. The square root of x squared, whoop, got to take square root of both sides. Once you do one side, you have to do the other. Square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 is plus or minus 1. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of negative 1 plus or minus i. Okay, so my degree was 4, which means I was expecting 4 roots. So I have 4 roots. I have 2 real roots at plus and minus 1. And I have 2, oops, two imaginary roots at plus or minus i, which is also a conjugate. Okay? Four and four, degree matches up with the number we found. Alright? That's the end.